Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca, Stu, and the crew. As many of you know, my daughter recently got married, so we have a whole bunch of different uh, Dollar Tree DIYs for weddings that we're going to go over now. So let's start with the centerpieces we made for the main reception hall. They're really easy to make, and most of the items are found at Dollar Tree. So the supplies we'll need are some uh, spray paint. We'll need these flowers from Hobby Lobby. I used two bundles of flowers from Hobby Lobby, and the rest of the flowers will come from the Dollar Tree. We just kind of mix and match them all together. They have a lot of these farmhouse style flowers out now at the Dollar Tree, as well as a bunch of different uh, greenery options. So it's nice to mix and match those with a little bit higher end quality flowers. And together it made a really nice arrangement. We'll also need some of these foam blocks, some tacky glue. We'll need hot glue, scissors, also one of these pedestals for the candles. We'll need the LED pillar candles. And then I got these mirror cake toppers around Valentine's Day. We'll need some twine and some floral wire and floral tape. Also, we'll need the smallest hula hoop that they offer and these wood planks. We're also going to need some adhesive pearl wrap. And then these little decorative mirrors. I actually picked these up from Walmart. They were less than $2 on sale. So let's get crafty. The first thing we're going to do is remove the little balls inside of the hula hoop so it doesn't make the rattling noise. And then we'll hollow out the center of the foam to hold the hoop. And we're going to just do this by using a craft knife and then keep checking with the hoop to see if it fits. Once it fits, you've removed enough of the foam. Then we're going to spray paint the hoop to match the color scheme and let those dry. While they're drying, we can start getting the foam block ready to hold the hoop. So this is how I secure the hoop. I actually take that um, floral wire and we're going to attach it to a long needle or you could use, use a thicker piece of wire and we're going to create a loop by just going straight down through the foam block and then going underneath of where you hollowed out the foam and coming back up the other side. So once we put the hoop in the little notch that we hollowed out, then we'll use this wire to twist over top of it and secure it in um, nicely along with some glue just to make sure that it's nice and sturdy in case anyone wants to pick it up by the hoop to move it, it won't come off this way. So then we'll take some Eileen's tacky glue, put that down in the groove as well as some hot glue, and then push the hoops down into the foam once the um, paint has dried. This is what it looks like so far. And then we'll take that small wood plank, put some adhesive pearl wrap on it, and one of the decorative mirrors. Both of those have adhesive on them, but you can use extra glue. The mirror has a film on it. Leave that on till the day of so you don't get fingerprints all over. And we'll let this dry for 12 hours so that it's all set up really well before we start adding anything else to our base. Now we're going to take some floral wire and floral tape as well as the greenery and some different flowers. And we're going to start building um, some different pieces together um, by taking a few of these greenery pieces, a few flowers, baby's breath, and the lamb's ear. And we're going to um, put these together and then wire them together so they'll stay in a bundle. And we'll make two identical pieces, one for each side of the base. So as you can see, I put the fern down, the baby's breath, and then um, the rose. And I'm going to just wire these together at the bottom. And then I'll do the same at the top. And then I'll take some of this floral tape and I'll wrap it around the stem to hold to, to hide the wire. So I'll wrap this all the way to the bottom. And then at the top, you do want to add a little bit extra just to hold them together. Um, so that they don't flop to the side, especially if they're going to be outside in the heat or anything like that. Ours were, you want to make sure that they're secured together. So that's our first bundle made. And then we'll do the exact same thing and make a second bundle. And now these are going to go on either side of the hoop. We're going to take the long stem and push it in pretty far into the foam and then take some of that gold wire that matches the color of the hoop. And we're going to secure this to the hoop in two places by just wrapping it around the hoop and then twisting it. We'll cut off any excess wire and then push in the ends to make sure there's no sharp edges. And then we'll again take that wire and tie the bottom portion. 
So that's our first side done, and we'll do the same thing to the opposite side. And here's what it looks like so far. Now we'll take some large pieces of the lamb's ear and we'll put that on either side of the hoop. And you want to get it kind of close to the hoop so that you can pull the wire over and position the leaves right over top of the hoop to cover up that bottom portion. Now, as you can see, I'm taking greenery and I'm kind of passing it out to all four sides. I do this with my flowers as well. I always count up my flowers for each project that I'm going to make. And I am, when I'm doing flowers, I want to make sure that I have them equal on all sides so it's balanced so as you see like right here i'm putting three flowers on this side of the hoop when i turn it around i'll do the exact same i'll have two large pink flowers and the large rose for the center and i'll position them in the same way and this is covering up all of that green foam underneath and then i have the same flowers for either side of the hoop um, that I'm going to work on the back section here. And you'll just keep filling these in and working to um, cover up all of that foam. We'll use some of this eucalyptus leaves from Dollar Tree, a few pieces from Hobby Lobby, and we'll position those throughout. And also these small white roses we'll put on either side of the hoop also. So our color scheme for this wedding was like an off-white, a really soft, dusty rose, and then cinnamon. So we're adding some cinnamon color flowers to this as well, and I just used hot glue for that. And now we'll start working on adding the rest of it together, which is this LED candle. You're going to just wrap a few times with twine and then put another little dot of glue there to hold it onto the candle. And then we'll glue some small flowers and leaves all the way around the candle. So the twine actually helps to hold the leaves as we decorate it because the hot glue really doesn't stick all that great to the waxy candle. Um, that's kind of brushed over the outside of these plastic candles. So you really wanna make sure that you have something that you can stick your flowers to, which is why I use the twine. You could also use ribbon in its place. So we'll just decorate around the outside edge here to help it to match the base with the same color schemes. And then we'll put that on the pedestal and it goes right in the center of our centerpiece. I also had these gold cake toppers. I bought two for each centerpiece and I just stick those into the foam, one on each side. And I did those the day of the wedding. And this is what our table decor looks like. That runner is just some gold and white tool from Dollar Tree. And we use that as our table runner. They were the perfect length for the table and the table numbers we got from the dollar section at Target. So now for our second project, we're going to work on this welcome sign. And here are the supplies you'll need. So I picked up this poster frame from the Dollar Tree, but it is a Walmart product, but they're selling them for $1.25. Also, I got these wall stickers and you could either use poster stickers or some vinyl if you have a cutting machine. You'll need some scissors, paintbrush, lighter, paint, and some Mod Podge. So now I'm going to remove the frame and get rid of the backing. We're not going to use that for this project and then remove this film that covers the plastic. So you'll just toss that out and then what we're going to do is decide which direction we want our sign to go and then we will pour some paint right in the center and using a large brush you want to work from the center out and just create these zigzag paint streaks and make sure you don't get too close to the edges because you want to be able to see through the sign so this will look like a faux acrylic sign um, that's usually pretty expensive but we can use um, this worked just fine, this $1.25 poster frame to do the same, you know, thing that those acrylic signs do, which could cost hundreds of dollars. So um, all you're going to do is smear that paint out towards the edges. Just don't get too close. Leave some open spaces. And then once it's dry, we are going to add some Mod Podge. So this is just to seal the back and the paint. When we're moving it, it won't get scratched up. Also, it's going to be an outside wedding, so we don't want it to um, get ruined if it rains or anything like that. So we're just going to squeeze some Mod Podge on and brush over top of it with a sponge until we have the whole backing covered. I wasn't real careful um, about the Mod Podge. I was 
perfectly comfortable getting on the open spaces around the outside edge there and it dried clear you couldn't see it at all so don't worry too much about that then go ahead and add your frame back on now this is a different project that i did a video for you guys a while back when i made the original wedding sign so you can see that gold backing i actually didn't put a gold backing on this one this is just the video portion that i have um, so don't pay attention to the backing just go ahead and add your frame back on without the back so you could see through the poster and then you could either use your poster letters or cut something out with the Cricut um, to make your welcome sign so for the original craft I did for this video I did um, something to go along with the bumblebee saying but we're using of course the welcome to the wedding sign and as you can see we've got these wall decal stickers already in the corners so all you want to do is cut around the decals and stick them on the corners and layer them and then add your welcome part to the sign i added some flowers to the top at the end and this is our sign for just a few dollars we have a faux acrylic sign to welcome our guests so project three we're making a wedding sign for the end of the drive it's a really large property i wanted people to be able to find it easily so we'll need some tissue paper the poster letters again or the vinyl depending on what you have to work with and then we're going to use some mod podge a sponge brush and some flowers from Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree. I'm using the same flowers I used for all the other projects so they coordinate. Also some scissors, some hot glue, and then a large sign from Michaels. This is a sign that opens up to like 10 feet long. It was $10 and I'm going to let it stand up like an easel sign. So now what we're going to do is just put Mod Podge on both sides of the sign, but we'll just work on one side at a time. But whatever I do to this side, I do to the opposite side. So we're just going to brush that Mod Podge on in a nice thin layer all the way um, on that panel of wood. And then taking that leaf uh, tissue paper that they sell in this eight count pack, we're just going to rub this onto the wood with the Mod Podge down. It really helps if you have someone that can help you so you don't get too many wrinkles in it while you smooth it down. If you don't though, that's okay. You can do it by yourself um, and then just line up your second sheet and put your second sheet on the top here. And as you can see, I do the second sheet by myself. So you really don't have to have help. It just is nice to have help if you do have it. So once I have this tissue paper stuck to the Mod Podge, I let it dry for just a few minutes. And then I take a sanding block from Dollar Tree and I lightly brush the edges to remove the excess paper and have a nice clean edge all the way around the sign. Now again, I do this exact same steps to the opposite side of the sign because this is going to stand up like one of those easel style um, signs. So just brush off that excess paper and this is what it looks like so far. And you'll want to add another layer of Mod Podge if it's going to be outside, which I did. Once that was dry, I can add my letters. I do have a Cricut, so I cut out the word wedding and I just put the letters straight down the middle of the sign. And I did this on both sides. Um, again, the property was kind of out in the woods in the country and I wanted people to know that they were still going the right way when they turn because it's a really long driveway and it almost looks like you turned off on the wrong road. So I wanted to be able to help my guests find the wedding easily. Then we'll add some more of the coordinating flowers that we've used in all the other projects to the top. We're just going to add some hot glue and attach them a little bit at a time. And I kept checking to make sure I could open the sign and it would stand up properly without um, the flowers getting in the way. So if you add flowers to the top, you'll want to be mindful of that. And now this is tied into the wedding with all the same color scheme and decoration. And it really looked pretty at the end of the drive. So once we have the baby's breath and lamb's ear on, we're just going to add some of the pink flowers as well to the center. And then that was it. It's very, very simple, but a nice added touch to help your guests find the wedding. So now for our fourth project, it's going to be centerpieces for cocktail hour. The tables were smaller, so we wanted to make something a little uh, smaller for the tables that coordinated. We'll need the lantern, some ribbon, some coordinating flowers, and then we'll use some of the Dollar Tree flowers as well, and then some scissors. We'll also need wire cutters, a paintbrush. We'll need hot glue. 
and some paint. We'll use the small lanterns from the Dollar Tree and this adhesive pearl wrap in white. We're also going to use some floral foam and these tiny wood boxes. So we'll remove the backing from this sign. It's actually supposed to be a wall plaque. We're going to remove the backing and then just toss it. We don't need it. We'll take off that um, twine hanger as well and the staples that are in the back so that it will sit flat on the table. So we're just creating a base with this box here. Then we'll take this other box. It's a floral hanger from Dollar Tree. We'll remove the twine hanger. We won't need that. And then we'll remove this hoop from the top of the lantern also. Always check to make sure your batteries work. And now we're going to paint the very bottom base with this sage green paint. Um, I wasn't sure if people were going to be able to see the bottom of this project here, but I wanted to have it finished and not have it look like an afterthought. So that's why I'm painting the bottom. So it's really up to you if you want to just leave it natural wood or not, if you create one of these. But I, again, I wanted to make sure that I had all the finishing touches on all of the projects that I made. And I just wanted to make sure it looked like we paid attention to detail. Just because you make things yourself doesn't mean it has to look cheap. So now we're going to set this aside to dry. While it's drying, we will paint the small floral hanger from Dollar Tree. We'll use a light brown paint that coordinates with the wedding colors. And again, I wanted to make sure I had a nice finished look on these boxes just in case you can see them through the flowers. So we're just going to paint this whole thing with this light brown paint and then we'll let this box dry also. So once the boxes are dry, our next step will be to cut the flowers down to decorate the boxes and then arrange them so we make sure we have enough. And then we're going to take some of this adhesive pearl wrap and we're going to cut that down to size and cover the little wood crate that's going to go into the base. So as you can see, it takes about three rows of the pearls for each one of the slats. We'll decorate both sides the same way. And then once we get to the back where it's a solid square, we are going to just use a larger piece of the adhesive pearl wrap and an X-Acto knife or a craft knife um, to cut out the little notches so that it looks like it was on there all the time and not something that we added to the box. It's really nice that it already has the adhesive. If you want to add some hot glue to make sure that the um, pearls are going to stay onto the base, you could do that. I didn't, and even in the heat of Texas, it stayed on just fine. I didn't really need any extra glue, but it's really personal to you if you want to add the extra glue or not. Here's what it looks like so far. Then we'll flip it over and we'll do the opposite side. So I'm just using a large piece of the adhesive pearl wrap and then cut out those little notches with the knife. So for the main center pieces, we ended up making 11. These smaller center pieces, we made six. So once that's completely covered, you don't have to do the top portion because that's going to have a mirror on it. You want these to kind of look like the larger center pieces. So I'm going to take some of that craft foam and cut that down so that it'll fit inside of this box. I have it nice and snug so I didn't add any extra glue. And then I decide where it's going to be inside of the base. And once I figure that out, I just mark it with a pencil. And then I can pull the base out, this box out of the base, I should say, and then add some glue and then replace the box inside. Now we're going to measure the foam and fill in these small open spaces on each side of the base. Now this isn't as deep as the other foam blocks that we use for the larger center pieces, so we will add some hot glue to the stems that we add to this center piece just because I wanted to make sure that they would stay and not fall out. 
So I just keep cutting the foam down until it fits perfectly flush inside the box. I didn't want it to be sticking up outside of the top of it. And then I did remove them and add a little bit of hot glue before I put the foam back in the base. Just want to make sure that everything's going to stay nice and snug in the centerpiece. So I'll fill both sides, sides up with the foam. And then using the mirror, it has an adhesive back, so we'll just pull that backing off once we decide where it will go on the top here. And then I did add some extra glue to the mirror and the base. We'll center that and put it right in the middle. And now arrange your flowers to make sure that you have enough on all four sides and that you can um, put them in the same arrangement on all four sides. Once you have the details worked out, then you'll go ahead and just start sticking these into the foam all the way around. And then again, you'll want to use some hot glue to help stick these into the base. Now, when I buy my flowers for centerpieces like this, I always make sure that I count the flowers out and I kind of figure out my first one. And then sometimes I'll go back to the store and get the rest of the flowers that I need. So I want to make sure I have the exact number of like roses, hydrangeas and, you know, eucalyptus leaves. I want them the same on all four sides so that it has a nice balanced look. So sometimes it helps to just make one and figure out how many of each flower you need. That way, when you go back to the store, you know how many bundles you're going to need to purchase. So it really helps that I'm using some Dollar Tree um, flowers to fill in some of these spaces because the flowers can get expensive even at 50% off um, when you're making 11 large ones and um, six small centerpieces. It really adds up after a while when you put all of the pieces together. Here's the first two sides done. And then we will add the flowers to the other sides and again use a little bit of hot glue if you need it and then once we have all the flowers in we're actually going to use some ribbon to add a little bit of the cinnamon color in here to make sure we have all of the colors for the wedding um, incorporated into the centerpiece. So with the green stems, you just wanna work your way around and add those in where you feel it needs to be um, filled in a little bit more. Okay, so here's all the flowers filled in. And that will be the lantern. We'll just set that on top. We won't glue it down so we can turn it on. Now taking these stems that we had the flowers on that were left over and some wire cutters or dog nail clippers, you'll want to cut a few pieces off to use to tie our um, bows to. So this is really nice to use the bows kind of like a flower. So what you're going to do is just take that um, ribbon from the Dollar Tree and you'll wrap it in like an X pattern around your fingers about six times and then cut off your excess ribbon. Then you'll use another piece of ribbon and you'll tie this in the center of the bow. And then you want that long tassel piece. You're going to actually use that to glue that wire stem to so that you can make it into like a flower that you can put into the foam. So as you can see, I just tie the center of the bow and then I leave one of the long pieces there and I'll add a little dot of hot glue to the stem and the ribbon, and then I'll just twirl it towards the ribbon until I get to the center. And add a little bit more hot glue to make sure it sticks to the bow. And now we can poke these into the foam, just like we did the flowers. And I'll just use one of these for each side. I only made two but I thought that was enough of the color. We didn't want to add too much. It was just um, to add a little bit of pop of color there. 
And then we'll add the lantern to the top. And I ripped off a few eucalyptus leaves and decided to decorate the top of the lanterns by just gluing them down the side of the lantern. Once I have the leaves on, it still looked a little bit plain. So I cut a small piece of white flowers off of a stem and I glued that to the very top. And again, you don't want to glue your lanterns down just because they're battery operated. You want to be able to remove those and the candles for the large centerpieces to turn them on the day of the wedding. And here's what it looks like all finished. And our cocktail hour and dance floor looked really pretty with these around the outside. So project five is the save the date cards. So these are important. A lot of times these get thrown in a drawer. So I came up with this idea. I hope you like it. So the supplies you'll need are these magnetic business cards. And then you will need um, some photo paper. I got that from Dollar Tree and a um, color printer. You'll need some scissors and then a picture of the bride and groom. So I made these on the computer and then I attached them to the magnetic business card so people can put them on the refrigerator. Then I use a save the date sticker at the top of the card. These were just blank cards. I printed this on sticker paper. I used some glitter vinyl from Dollar Tree to decorate the bottom portion of the card. Just cut it into a rectangle and stuck that down. Added some of the adhesive pearls and a small coordinating ribbon to the front and then the inside we wrote a little saying and then cut some little slits in the side to tuck the magnet into then we use these um, wax melts that say save the date i got from hobby lobby um, you'll need the hot glue gun wax melts the stick uh, wax melts some stamp sponge water and parchment paper you'll squeeze the wax onto the parchment paper then stamp it down let it cool and once they cool you'll just peel them off of the parchment paper and then attach them to the back of the envelopes and you can use glue dots to do that project six these go around the guest book and give some the guest something to do during cocktail hour we're going to use one of these dollar tree signs some ribbon we're also going to need some stain or paint. It's really up to you. Also, these hearts, um, we're going to paint those. Those will be for the guest book. And we got this large frame that the hearts will actually go into. Then we're going to use some paint, whatever color you like, some rub-on transfers. And I got those at the Dollar Tree. And then we'll need some paint brushes and some wood boxes i'm going to use these pen cups and the little planter so how to this is what we're going to do so one of these signs from dollar trees so this one was a bathroom sign i painted over the center and used the rub on transfer decals but the green around the outside was already there so i left it then i took these little boxes and i stained them and i took a valentine's day heart ornament and i painted it pink so i tied that to the front of the box with some coordinating ribbon and then I made a sign for the front of the sign, just printed it out on sticker paper. And I attached this box to the backing with some hot glue. And then I attached the sticker to the front to tell people to sign the hearts and then drop them into the jar so we could put them in the guest book. We'll fill that bin up with hearts. These smaller bins I made um, to put these cards in that I got from Hobby Lobby. They say, please leave your advice and wishes for the um, new Mr. and Mrs. And I put those cards in one of the boxes and then date night, share your best ideas for the happy couple that goes in the other box. And the sign lets you know what you're supposed to do. And I have two pen cups that I made um, to sit next to it that coordinates with these little boxes here from Dollar Tree. We just stain them and then I put bows on the outside and also stain the inside of them as well. And it just gives people something to do while we're taking pictures. And they had a lot of fun doing it. Um, they wrote some really funny things on there. So it was cute to see what people came up with. In DIY number seven, we're going to do the favors. A lot of time favors get thrown away. So we decided to make fans or to purchase fans. We got these um, from Amazon. So the supplies you'll need are these banners. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree. It's supposed to be to make like a wedding banner. Also the stretch lace. We'll use some of that. We'll need a hole punch and the paper fans from Amazon. 
Um, they were actually pretty cheap. So then what I did is I punched holes in the top of this banner and printed out these little signs on some sticker paper. And then we attach the fans to the signs with the elastic. And then we put them at the wedding entrance in a really cute basket next to the programs and had a bin of ice cold bottled water sitting there as well since the wedding was outside and it was pretty hot that day. So that was a great favor. Everybody loved the fans. They used them. So it was a great idea. Project number eight for the reception, we actually made the wine glasses. So the supplies you'll need are some Dollar Tree wine glasses. And then we're going to use either the Armor Etch and some vinyl from Dollar Tree, or you could use the glass etching cream from Dollar Tree, a paintbrush, some rubbing alcohol, paper towels, and a paper cutter or vinyl cutter, or just some stencils. It's really up to you. So for your wine glass, you want to wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. Um, once you have your initials cut out, we just did the first initial of all the um, bridal party. Then I take two pool noodles and I just tape them together using some masking tape. I just had them and the glasses were rolling around. So I thought this was a great way to hold the cup so they wouldn't move. And then once I have the um, initials printed out, I just stick those to the glass and I don't really care that much if the outside edge sticks down really well. I just was really concerned about the edge of the letter because I wanted that to stick down really well so that I could use the glass etching cream um, and not worry about it running underneath of the um, stencil here. So as you can see, it's a little bit um, bunched up around the outside edge, but that's okay. Just take your time. You can cut some little notches in the edge um, to help you get it down on the glass. And this is a great gift that you can give the wedding party. They can take these home as part of their um, wedding gift. And um, everyone seemed to really like them a lot. Everyone likes personalized things. So it was easy to do just the first initial. And then all you're going to do is just dab on that etching cream. Um, you want to put it kind of thick, not too thick. You just want to make sure you have enough that it's completely covered and that you're not missing any spots. And then... Um, You'll let this sit according to the package directions. Most of the directions, even the one from the Dollar Tree brand, um, the Crafter Square brand, it's like five or 10 minutes. It's not very long that the cream has to sit on the glasses. And then you just rinse it under some warm water and dry it with a paper towel and they're done. So it's really, really easy to do. Um, we also did the bride and groom's glasses. We put Mr. and Mrs. on it and we put their wedding date on the back. So it was really uh, pretty on the table. So once you've rinsed the glass, as you can see, you're just going to remove that decal that you made or the stencil and obviously just throw that out. You won't need it anymore and then dry the glass all the way. And they were really pretty. It's kind of hard to see on camera right here, but the actual camera that, you know, just taking still shots helped uh, show them a little bit better. So here's the letter A. I have all the glasses done. Here's the Mr. and Mrs. with the hearts and their wedding date on the wine glass. They just absolutely love these. And it makes it personal and something they can keep, a nice keepsake for the wedding. Super easy to make and you save a bundle doing these yourself. So here they are on the table. Now for number nine, Mr. and Mrs. So I just made these acrylic signs to go on the head table. So the supplies you'll need are these signs from Hobby Lobby. I actually got them on clearance, even though they're still selling them um, for $3.24. They do go on sale for 50% off, so you can get them for $7.50. Um, I use some Mod Podge, a sponge brush, and some paint. And I just use a paintbrush to... Um, paint the back of the sign. You can use some vinyl from Dollar Tree. I remove the wording with some nail polish remover. I paint the back with paint and Mod Podge, and then I just put the gold cutout letters on the front, and we put these on the head table. Very simple. And then the bouquets were the rest of the decorations for the head table. They're so pretty, you might as well use them. Number 10 is the menu board. So I just used these small chalkboards from Dollar Tree to help guests know what was for dinner. So we used some vinyl, also some scissors, a uh, paintbrush, some coordinating paint to match the wedding colors, some hot glue, the washi tape and gold. It's actually the scrapbooking tape. So it's about half an inch wide. And then the chalkboard signs. I'm going to use these paper flowers also from Hobby Lobby and we will decorate our chalkboards. I just paint them a solid color. 
I add the gold ribbon to the top and glue on some flowers. And then with the Cricut, we cut out what was for dinner or cocktail hour. And we had these set up all around the venue. So everybody knew what everything was in case there were any allergies or anything like that. And here they are set up before the caterers got there. Number 11 is a cake plate from Dollar Tree. So we're going to use just a Dollar Tree vinyl in any color. You'll want permanent and then one of the small salad plates. And then you can cut out um, something personal to the bride and groom and just put that on the cake plate and leave that on the table. And that's another nice keepsake that the bride and groom can keep. Um, and it was so fun. So that's basically all the things we did DIY other than the invitations. Um, there's my daughter and my husband, me and my oldest son. This is my daughter, Sierra, in the wedding. My other daughter, Savannah. This is my daughter, Ariana. And my son, Isaiah. My daughter, Rebecca. This is my other daughter, Mariah. And then my daughter, Shana. So I put them in order of birth from my oldest to my youngest. And this is my daughter with my new son-in-law, Ryan, and our whole family together. It was a beautiful day. This is the whole bridal party with some cousins. And this took place during the ceremony. This is right after the ceremony. And then this was after the ceremony also. It was just a beautiful day. I wanted to share some pictures with you guys and some of the DIYs. I know I don't have full videos of everything. I just kind of had to explain them, but I thought it would be nice to kind of collectively put all of the DIYs into one video and just some ideas to help you guys see you can have a really nice, elegant wedding on a budget. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg and nobody knows that the things I put out were from the Dollar Tree. So I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it for you guys and seeing some more of the pictures from the wedding. And this is the very end. We had some fireworks and then for the send off, we had sparklers, which made some really fun photos at the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great day, everyone.